I've basically neglected my reselling business for the past couple weeks because things have become much busier for me at my full-time job. And what I learned through that neglect is that some reselling platforms can do better than others without constantly needing to be coddled. So if you wanna see what items sold for me in the past week, despite the fact that I wasn't doing all of the reseller things that I should have been, and if you wanna hear what reselling platforms really do well without that much work, stay tuned. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body tendons by your neck Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on reselling platforms like Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, Facebook Marketplace. There are a few others, but those four are the ones that really brought me the most income in the past week. And in this video, what I'm going to be sharing with you are all the things that sold for me last week, as well as where I sourced the items, how much I paid for them, how much profit I made on those items, etc., etc. So if that sounds interesting to you, as well as other kinds of reselling content like thrift hauls, tips and tricks videos, that sort of thing, then definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button if you're brand new to my channel and if you are brand new thank you so much for checking this out I really appreciate it so like I said we are gonna be talking about what sold in the week of April 19th through April 25th it was not an amazing week and I did not sell very many things which is unfortunate because if you watch this video right here I talk about how I am trying not to go sourcing again until I have sold 500 items so every sale counts at this point and to not be making very many sales hurts a lot but I will be sharing with you what things sold and my numbers at the end of the video for each platform and my total gross profits net profits all that sort of stuff so that you can see what's possible for a part-time reseller and so that you can see which platforms actually ended up performing best for me so we're gonna start with Monday which was April 19th I started off the week with a handful of pretty great Poshmark sales I'm not gonna lie the first thing was this free people movement which is like free people's athletic wear line it was the ready set go hoodie pullover over in a gray color in a size extra small. I got this at a local consignment store. My average cost of goods for that trip was $5.06. It sold for $35 with discounted shipping because the day before I had sent out a closet clear out message to someone who had liked it, asked if they would be willing to buy it for 35. I had it priced at 40, but if they'd be willing to buy it at 35 and Poshmark would pay for a portion of their shipping, they said yes, but they said yes on Monday. So I just went ahead and sent the offer and I still made a profit after after you consider you know cost of goods and Poshmark's 20% fees I made a profit of $20 and 48 cents and that hoodie was listed under two weeks so that was a pretty good sale I know that a lot of people are very cautious about picking up free people at this point just because the market is extremely saturated I still get really excited when I find it just because there isn't a whole lot of it in my area and it still sells pretty fast for me I don't know the next thing to sell was this Izod Golf Black Full Zip Hooded Lightweight Jacket in a size medium. This I picked up at a local consignment store for under a dollar when I was shopping in bulk. And it's not really the kind of thing I'm like going out of my way to pick up, but it's a jacket. It was under a dollar. I was like, sure, let's see what happens. It's all for 15. It did take a long time to sell. Like it took probably close to a year for it to sell, but it's all for 15. My profit on that ended up being $11.20. The next thing to sell was another small sale. It was a Columbia PFG, which is professional fishing gear, I wanna say. Um, it was like a long sleeve fishing shirt in a size small for women. I think that the PFG shirts for men do a little bit better, but this sold for $10. That was the offer that I got for it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So I made a total profit on that item of $6.25. I probably had that item for at least half a year. So not a quick seller by any means. And then the last thing to sell on Poshmark on Monday was this pair of So Slimming by Chico's straight leg jeans with a mid rise and it was in a size four. I believe that's like a Chico size zero. I could be wrong, but you know, Chico's uses their vanity sizing. That sold for my full asking price of $25. So I was not mad about it. I got it for less than a dollar at the local consignment store. My profit on those jeans was $19.20. Chico's jeans, they will sell. They take a while for me though. They're definitely not quick flips. So, you know, if you can find it for super cheap and you don't mind sitting on them, it's not a horrible pickup, but you will probably sit on them for quite some time. So be prepared. The next thing to sell over on eBay was another item that I've had listed forever it was a video game actually called uncharted 4 for the ps4 this sold via offers to watchers for seven dollars and 90 cents with them paying four dollars for shipping it was promoted at one percent so i made a profit on that item of seven dollars and ten cents 
our local library has a used bookstore and they also have some like video games and CDs and DVDs and that sort of thing. And we always get little like free book coupons as prizes for when the kids do like their summer reading program or I don't know, they're just constantly giving these things out. So every once in a while I will go to the bookstore in the basement and I will just look for stuff that I can sell. And you know, video games, I don't know that much about them they will sell, you know, some are obviously more popular than others. Usually if you can find like a Super Mario Kart or something, that's like, you know, the top shelf of video games. But if I find video games and I, you know, flip the disc over, make sure that there aren't a ton of scratches and stuff, if I'm getting them for free, like why not? So this I went ahead and listed, like I said, probably a close to a year ago, and I made a $7.10 profit, so there you go. The next thing to sell on eBay was a full price sale, and it was this Polo Ralph Lauren gray classic polo shirt in a size 2XL for men. It sold for my full asking price of $24.99. They paid for shipping. I had $3 into it because it came to me in a men's thread of rescue box, and so I made a profit of $18.89 on that. And again, it was listed under two weeks, so really quick flip. It was a bigger size, which I think helped. And this is just one of those classic things that most men need in their lives. The next thing to sell was this Talbot's white and blue laser cut medallion print dress in a size 10. I got this at the local consignment store for under a dollar as well. I believe I sent it into ThreadUp. It did not sell at ThreadUp, so they sent it back to me. And so I sold it for my full asking price of $39.99. I didn't even have best offer on that because I was like, I don't want to get low <laughs> Like, I just want my $40. That was with them paying for shipping. It was promoted at 1% and I made a profit on that dress of $34.15. This kind of makes me super mad about how much I used to sleep on Talbots and hate on Talbots. Like, I feel like so many people in the reselling community were like, ew, Talbots, I don't get it. Talbots has been selling so well for me and for like high dollar amounts, like $40 for a dress. I cannot get $40 for a lot of these other brands that resellers talk about. I don't know, maybe it's just me in my closet. Talbot sells and it sells pretty well. So I was super excited to see that and just motivated to pick up more Talbots. I don't know. And then I had a Facebook Marketplace sale. It was a Disney Mickey Mouse PJ set in a size 24 months. This my son wore. I don't even know where we got it. I kind of think I just picked it up at Goodwill or something. But it sold for $12 on Facebook Marketplace and I made a profit on that PJ set of $11.16. I'm starting to get back into listing some kids stuff just because it's easy to list. I have a ton at my house that I need to go through and it's not bad. Like it's not bad photographing and listing that stuff and making money, even if it's a few dollars here and there, making money off of stuff that's just taking up space in your house. So, um, you know, kids stuff, it will sell even in like pretty horrendous condition. Like it'll sell because people always need clothes for their kids and they don't want to pay a fortune for it. And then on Tuesday, which was April 20th, on Poshmark, I sold a pair of Abercrombie & Fitch Distressed Super Skinny Jeans in a size 26. I have a friend of mine who became a reseller. She doesn't like talk about it much or do that much with it, but she does resell here and there. And she said that um, Abercrombie & Fitch jeans do really well for her. I tend to pass on it at the thrift, but I did pick these up after she said that. Um, I got them at that local consignment store, so I have less than a dollar into them. They sold for $20 on Poshmark, so I made $15.20 of profit on those jeans. So another brand that maybe is worth looking at, Abercrombie & Fitch jeans, who knew? The next thing to sell was over on Mercari, this was such a great sale. It was this vintage Polo Sport Ralph Lauren baseball jersey shirt in a size large. This came to me in a men's third up rescue box as well. So I have about $3 into this. It sold for $80 on Mercari. I had them pay for shipping and I made a profit on that shirt. After you factor in cost of goods, Mercari's fees, all that good stuff, I made a profit of $63.38. This shirt, I remember, like, I just wasn't super excited about listing it because it just looked like a, you know, regular, like, Polo Ralph Lauren shirt. Um, I had it sitting in my death pile for a while. When it finally came time to list it, I looked up comps and I was like, I'm sorry, come again, excuse me, how much? And so, you know, people had them listed for like 150, 125. Solds were kind of in that like $100 range. On Mercari, I turn on smart pricing now on every single one of my items. And what that is, is when you list an item on Mercari, they will ask you, do you want us to 
gradually lower the price every day so that you can get more eyes on your pieces and hopefully if someone likes an item and you drop the price by you know five ten percent the next day um someone who's liked the item will be like oh i guess i'll get it at that price but i told mercari for this item hey i am okay with dropping the price all the way down to 80 dollars on this item and once it got to 80 it sold you know it would have been nice if it had sold for a hundred dollars or 125 dollars but the truth of the matter is Mercari kept slowly dropping the price little by little and no one wanted it till it was $80. It was listed on every other platform at 150, I believe. People could have sent offers, people could have, you know, done X, Y, and Z. They didn't, so it sold to this person. And I still made a killer profit, so I'm not even mad about it. I know a lot of people don't like the smart pricing on Mercari. I actually love it now. So that's just one little Mercari tip for me. The next thing to sell was again on Facebook Marketplace, and it was the brand. I don't know, I'm gonna butcher this. Obos, Abaz, Abaz, I don't know. It's a pair of like gray and pink hiking shoes. These went to a viewer named Carrie. So Carrie, thank you so much. I picked them up at a local thrift store when I went thrifting on Valentine's Day. That was my husband's Valentine's Day gift to me. He was like, go out and thrift and I will watch the kids. And plus they were doing like, 50% off all their clothes or something, not shoes, but my average cost of goods that day was $2.37. So she bought these for 40. I paid for shipping, which was $8. So I made a profit on those shoes of $28.17. And they weren't listed that long. They got a lot of attention, a lot of lowball offers on different platforms, but I'm glad that they finally went to a viewer. And Carrie, I hope you love them and go on some great hikes with them. That takes us to Wednesday, which was April 21st. I only had eBay sales, no Poshmark, no nothing. So the first thing to sell, I was so happy about. It was this Diane von Furstenberg. I know I'm saying that wrong. By the way, my friend Veronica, she has a YouTube channel and she just made a cool video about how to say German brands correctly because she's from Germany and she teaches German. So if you want to learn how to like say brand names correctly and not be like me, you should watch that video. I will link it down below. But anyway, it was this 100% silk Jeremy wrap dress in a size 10. It had a collar. This I actually sourced off of Poshmark because a friend of mine who was a reseller and we would talk a lot like through Instagram DMs and stuff. Um, she decided that she was gonna further things with her jewelry making business. I think actually these are from her, these earrings. But she decided that she didn't wanna resell clothes anymore. So she reached out and asked if I would buy some stuff off of her. So I bought like, I don't know, maybe 10 things that I felt like were brands that I had a hard time finding. And it wasn't super cheap. Once you factor in shipping and all that kind of stuff, I ended up paying $25 per item, which is way more than maybe I would have normally. But because she was a friend and I wanted to support her, I just went ahead and, you know, went through with it. Because why not? I care about her. It was more kind of like a good luck with your new business venture type thing and, you know, helping her unload some of her inventory. So I have about $25 into this. It sold for $45 and that was with free shipping. Thankfully, it did weigh under a pound, so it cost less than $6 to ship it out. But once you factor in that $25 cost of goods and shipping and eBay fees, I made a whopping $9.84 on this. It is what it is. It's fine. It also had a huge stain on the front, which obviously I took pictures of. I disclosed. Um, I didn't even bother trying to get it out because I was like, I'm just going to sell it as is. And it's still sold for $45. So there you go. The next thing to sell on eBay was this Karen Kane black embroidered long sleeve tunic shirt in a size large. This I had about $3 into because I got it at a local consignment store during a sidewalk sale. Karen Kane, I don't have very much experience with. I've heard that it can do okay. This I thought was like kind of like more current looking. It looked kind of boho. So I tried it out. It's over $28 on eBay. That was an offer sent to me. Um, they paid for shipping. I made a profit on that item of $22.58. So the right Karen Kane piece, it can do okay. And then moving on to Thursday, which was April 22nd. Guys, this is going to be a quick video because not a lot of stuff sold. I sold on Poshmark this pair of AD1 lace-up ankle boots in a size 7. AD stands for like Andrea Dela, I don't know, something. Some random like kind of Italian brand, but they don't even make a lot of clothes. So it's not even really worth knowing. I picked these up when I did Courtney from Bolo Buddies. Um, she organized this big thrift haul challenge with a bunch of people that the homeschooling picker ended up winning. 
which I mean, I don't blame her because she found some really cool stuff. I did not have a good thrifting trip that day, but I had about $4.71 into these. That was my average cost of goods for that trip. And I remember saying in the video, I was like, I don't really know anything about these. I don't even know why I picked these up. They just looked like they were in really good condition and they just looked to be really cool. A lot of people said like, I think they're motorcycle boots or some people said hiking boots. I just said boots and they sold for $25. That was an offer sent to me. I had them listed for 50. I was not getting attention on them anywhere, probably because the brand is so obscure. I took the $25 offer. I made a profit of $15.29. I love experimenting with new brands and stuff. This just wasn't it and that's okay. You're not gonna get a you know score every single time. On eBay, I had another great Talbot sale. It was this Talbot's pink sleeveless crochet lace sheath dress in a size 14. Again, I had less than a dollar into it. It went to thread up because that's what it was sourced for. It did not sell at thread up. It got sent back. I sold it for $29.90. That was the offer that I sent out to watchers. They paid for shipping. I made a profit on that dress of $23.75. So both Talbot's pieces that I've talked about thus far were dresses, were on the larger size so that first dress was a size 10 this one was a size 14 and they were both pretty fancy these are not casual dresses that you're just like hanging around at home wearing these are the kinds of dresses that you wear to weddings or to like bridal showers things of that nature and i think a lot of those things are starting back up again and people need clothes for those events so if you have some fancy schmancy you know talbot's dresses or dresses by other brands go ahead and list them because they are selling at least for me and then the next thing to sell on ebay was actually kind of a bundle, I guess you would call it. It was two pairs of pants that went to the same buyer and I had free shipping on both. So I was able to get both in a padded flat rate envelope or I wasn't able to. Ebliss, a shipping company for resellers, they shipped these out for me. But the first thing to sell was this pair of new with tags, cool Courage cargo shorts in a size 42. I had $12.80 into those from a local store that I did some retail arbitrage at. Y'all know how much luck I've been having with cool. And then the second thing to sell was another pair of cool shorts. These were the ambush cargo shorts in a size 42. So both of them were in the same size. Obviously this person just needs some new shorts. They found two in the same size in different styles and colors in my eBay store. So they bought each pair of shorts for $50 and like I said, both were able to fit into a padded flat rate envelope. And so once you factored in eBay's fees, shipping and cost of goods, my total profit on those two pairs of shorts was $56.64, which I am super happy about. Moving on to Friday, which was April 23rd, the first thing to sell on Poshmark, the only thing to sell on Poshmark, was this new with tags Carter's fishing boat button up shirt in a size 24 months. This was actually for my son. He just never got around to wearing it. There aren't very many two year olds who will tolerate like a collared button up shirt. Um, so I don't know who I was kidding when I got that for him. My son now loves to wear button ups with like collars and stuff because he likes to dress up as presidents and wear ties and bow ties and stuff. I actually have a really cute pajama set from J. Crew that my best friend got me. And it's like a, the top is like a button up with like a little collar. So I was wearing it last night and my son was like, is that a collar on your shirt? And I was like, yeah. He's like, do you want a tie? I have some ties. And I was like, I'm good. Like, I, I, I don't know. No, I'm good. So anyway, that was a that was a tangent. It sold for ten dollars, and I made seven dollars and five cents of profit. And I'm counting that as full profit because that shirt was fully intended for my son. He just didn't wear it. The next thing to sell was over on eBay, and it was this Eddie Bauer Weather Edge 365 hooded vented jacket in a size large. It was something that I got at the local consignment store, so less than a dollar into it. It sold via offers to watchers. I sent an offer of $27.90. It was promoted at 1%. They paid for shipping. I made $23.31 on that jacket. The next thing to sell on eBay was this J. Crew Factory Paper Straw Fedora Ribbon Hat. This sold for $14.99. With them paying for shipping, it was promoted at 1%, and so I made a total of $12.70 on that hat. That was actually something that I got at my best friend's bachelorette party weekend thing. We went to Atlantic City, and this was like many, many years ago. This is an old hat. Um, these kinds of like straw fedora type hat things have been selling really well for me. Okay, I say selling really well for me. I've only had two, but both of them have sold within you know a week or two of them being listed. So if you find any of this kind of stuff, this is the season to sell it. 
And then on Facebook Marketplace, I had another sale. It was this pair of new with tags, Columbia Omni Shade UPF 50 relaxed swim trunks in a size large. These also came to me in a men's thread of rescue box. I got them a while ago, but I just kind of threw them in a bin of stuff that I was waiting to list more in the spring and summer months. And so they sold on Facebook Marketplace for my full asking price of $25. And my profit on those swim trunks was $20.45. Moving on to Saturday, which was April 24th, I sold on Poshmark this pair of Lauren Ralph Lauren chambray jute open toe wedges in a size eight. These I got at the bins like way long ago, so probably like $1.50 into these. They sold for $20, and so my profit on those shoes was $14.50. That was another item that you know I had sourced, I had listed, I was not getting a lot of attention on them, so I actually sent them into thread up. They accepted them and tried to sell them. They did not sell, so I recently got them back, finally just listed them again, and they sold probably within like a month of me relisting them. So they've been on quite the journey, but hopefully they are now at their final home. So there you go. The next thing to sell was another pair of cool shorts. This was the cool Mutiny River shorts in a size 40. These almost have the quality of like swim trunks. I don't think that they are, but they're extremely lightweight. I think 100% nylon, just very interesting. They sold for $45 on Poshmark with a $1.50 shipping discount. I had $12.23 into those because retail arbitrage. So I made a total profit on those shorts of $22.27. On eBay, I had two full price sales. The first was this pair of Nike basketball black and gold like color block shorts in a size large. These were like the old school like 90s style basketball shorts and they even had kind of like a um not a rip, but like a pull in the fabric, um, but they still sold for $24.99 with free shipping and they were promoted at 1%. So I made a profit on those of $18.04. Those I got for free from a friend of mine at church, so pure profit. The next thing to sell came to me in a thread up DIY denim rescue box, like an awful one. I will link it right here. I literally labeled it, do not watch this, and yet people did, but it was this pair of Massimo, which is Target, low rise skinny jeans in a size five, but can fit six. So they're like juniors, but that's Target's way of saying five or six, you should be able to wear these. So I listed them for $14.99 with free shipping. They sold for $14.99 with free shipping, promoted at 1%. So I made a profit on those jeans of $5.93. Goodness graciousness. I have made my money back on that box and then some because there were like one or two winners in there, but it was a rough box. Like, mm. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari and it was this pair of seven for all mankind Roxanne skinny jeans in a size 26. These also came to me in a thread of rescue box denim DIY rescue box. So I also had $1.27 into those. They sold for my full asking price on Mercari of $25. I think I started them at 35, but you know, had my bottom price be $25 using smart pricing. So I made a profit on those jeans of $20.20. And then finally on Sunday, which was April 25th, I started off that day with a Poshmark sale of these Black Theory front pleated wool dress pants for women in a size 10. These I had picked up at a local consignment store when they were doing like a 70% off sale or something. And my average cost of goods that day was $5.06. They sold for 30, which was a lot less than I wanted because I think I had them listed for 50, but they sold for 30. And so my profit on those pants was $18.94. And then I sold this pair of Timbaland brown leather lace up boat shoes in a size nine for men. These I picked up at that local consignment store, so I had less than $2 into them. They sold for $15. I had had these listed for so long with zero interest, so I was so happy to get that offer. I should have relisted them. But I made a profit of $10.20 on those shoes. And then finally, I had one thread up sale this past week, but it was a really good one. It was this new with tags, point sewer, blue flutter sleeve top in a size small. I picked it up for $3 at a local consignment store when they were doing a sidewalk sale. It sold on thread up for $89.99. Point sewer, in case you didn't know, is part of the J. Crew Madewell family. And my payout on that top was $48.60, which is wild. I had that top listed on Poshmark and eBay with zero to little interest and that was with like stock photos and everything um and you know thread up took their crappy pictures and sold it for 90 bucks so i'm very happy about it so here are my numbers on poshmark i sold 11 items 
that is very pathetic for me. <laughs> Usually I sell at least like, I don't know, like around 20, but to sell 11 is very low. So my gross sales on Poshmark was $250. The amount that I earned after shipping discounts and you know Poshmark's 20% fees was $194.14. My cost of goods on those 11 items was $32.56. So I made a net profit on Poshmark of $161.58. On eBay, I sold 12 items compared to Poshmark's 11. My gross sales was $358.65. And once you account for shipping and fees and promoted fees and all that stuff, it drops to $293.53. My cost of goods on those 12 items from eBay were $60.27, and so my net profit was $233.26 compared to Poshmark's $161.58. On Mercari, I sold two items for a total of $105 in gross sales. Once you factor in basically just Mercari's fees because I no longer will pay for things on Mercari, I make the buyer pay for shipping, and so the total drops to $90.85. My cost of goods on those two items was only $4.27. So I made a net profit of $86.58 on those two items. On Facebook Marketplace, I sold three items and that was for a gross sales amount of $77. Once you factor in their very low fees, it's like 5%, I made $65.15. I do also always make Facebook Marketplace buyers pay for shipping. My cost of goods on those three items was $5.37. And so my net profit on Facebook Marketplace last week was $59.78. $0.78. On ThreadUp, I sold the one item. They sold that item for $89.99. I got a payout of $48.60. My cost of goods on that one item was $3, so I made a profit of $45.60 from ThreadUp. So in total, I sold 29 items. That is less than how much I usually sell on like Poshmark alone, <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to roll with it. But for those 29 items, I had a gross sales amount of $790.65. And once you factor in shipping and fees, that drops to $692.27. My cost of goods for those 29 items was $105.47. And so my net profit for last week was $586.80 sense, which is not awful given the fact that I really barely listed anything. Like I went through like probably a four to five day stretch where I hadn't listed anything and probably for the entire week I had listed like under 10 new items. So it was rough in terms of the amount of time that I was able to put into my reselling business. And what I found interesting was that as a result, my Poshmark sales suffered so much. Like I dropped from, let's see, the week before I had sold 17 items on Poshmark. The week before that I had sold 35. So you can see like Poshmark was on a steady decline because they wasn't able to do much over there. Whereas eBay kind of stayed the same. I sold 12 things this past week. The week before that I had sold 12. The week before that I had sold 12. The week before that I had sold 12. Okay, so basically I sold 12 things a week on eBay and that didn't change. So I, I found that pretty interesting. And then furthermore, Facebook Marketplace was actually doing pretty well for me. I mean, I only sold three things over there, but I don't have very much listed over there. Facebook Marketplace was one of those platforms that I was very ready to give up on because I felt like I was, you know, putting a lot of effort into there for the first couple of weeks and wasn't seeing any results. But now that like a month or two has passed, now I'm starting to see some pretty decent sales. And I've heard a lot of people say that they really believe that Facebook Marketplace may become a very strong contender to eBay if it isn't already. Some people even think that Facebook Marketplace may actually become a bigger reselling platform for them than eBay. I do think that the deciding factor will be whether or not Facebook Marketplace gets an actual team of like customer service reps because right now it's basically all just, you know, bots like helping you. And by helping you, I mean not doing a single thing if you have an issue on Facebook Marketplace. But if they just kind of hire some real human beings to do some work over there, 
they've got a good thing going. So I'm definitely going to keep riding that train. I'd love to hear from you how your sales were. And if you're noticing trends, you know, on various reselling platforms, especially with Facebook marketplace, I am definitely still a baby when it comes to that reselling platform. A lot of you have asked in the comments for me to make a video on Facebook marketplace. And I just don't feel ready. Yet. <laughs> like I just don't know much about it. But as I keep listing over there and keep learning more about it, I will definitely let you know. The last thing that I will say is I'm very interested to see what happens in my reselling business now that I am listing to list perfectly first and pushing out all of my listings to all of my reselling platforms at once. It used to be that I listed to Poshmark and then after like a week or two, I would cross list items from Poshmark to all of my other reselling platforms. And as a result, Poshmark has always been my number one reselling platform, but that's because Poshmark gets the first opportunity to sell an item from me because it's only listed there first. But like yesterday, for example, I listed nine items and while I was listing those nine items and cross listing them out to all of my various reselling platforms, an item sold on Facebook Marketplace. It literally only took half an hour for that item to sell. So I'm curious to see if I give all of my reselling platforms a fair shot at you know selling an item. I'm curious to see which reselling platform comes out on top. It wasn't fair for me to assume before that my top reselling platform was Poshmark when I was giving it such a leg up. So I'm going to keep doing that and I'm going to let you know how things go. I'm also going to be relisting a lot of sale listings and doing it in the same way where I, you know, get it onto list perfectly and then push it out to all of my platforms at the same time. So I'm really excited to see where this experiment takes me. So just to give you two more numbers, one is going to be from that consignment store where I got to shop in bulk. I like to share with you how much I been making over there and how many items have sold and I also like to share with you how many items I've sold towards my 500 sold a listing goal so that I can go sourcing again so first consignment store I have now sold 503 items that's not including items that I've sent into thread up for them to sell for me so 503 items that I've sold myself from that consignment store and I have made nine thousand eight hundred ninety seven dollars and eighty one cents not too shabby and then how many Many listings have I sold? I have sold 140 items in 22 days. I need to pick this up because on like June 2nd or 3rd, I think that's the date, that weekend there's a big consignment event that happens in my area where, you know, different people from the community will consign. And in years past, that's been a really amazing sourcing opportunity for me. It happens twice a year, but obviously it didn't happen last year because of COVID. So I've been really excited about it, but it's at the beginning of June. So I have a month and some change to sell over 300 pieces. Can it be done? We shall see. We shall try our very hardest, especially now that the musical that I've been helping to direct at school is coming to a close. Thank God I will have a lot of my time back to list and sell, even though we're kind of entering a season where people are just typically not buying as much. So those are my sales for the week. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I'd really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because it does help not only this video, but my channel as well. That is it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.